this morning, and uh, we thank God for his amazing grace, even mm -hmm. on this morning, for allowing us to see another first day of the week, uh, to be in the presence and the fellowship of the saints as well. We want to continue to pray for those who are sick, those who are traveling, and those who are away. On this morning, as you all know, we are continuing our study of the book of Timothy, First Timothy, on last Sunday, and also in the Wednesday night class, we um, did a way of introduction, uh, studying a few things and discussing a few things on Wednesday and Sunday. On this morning, we're going to, um, our intent is to cover chapter number one on today, and um, if we're able to finish it, to God be the glory. Amen. If we're not, to God, <laughs> God be, be the glory. glory. Amen. <laughs> so this morning, First Timothy chapter number one, and uh, in our study thus far, we um, looked at verse number one through verse number three. But on this morning, I want to begin by reading um, the last two verses of chapter number one. Uh, verse number 19 and verse number 20. Look what the Bible says. We'll start there, but we're going to go back to verse number 1. But verse number 19 and verse number 20 starts off by saying, Holding the faith in a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hamanias and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Uh, I want to start there because I want us to keep in mind the overall theme of the epistles. Um, also, why this epistle is being written. And the primary reason for this epistle being re written is to combat um, those who were conducting themselves as, um, you know, other than Christians. Also, those who were teaching things that were not sound, was not healthy. And, and um, this is the primary reason, or, or one of the reasons, one of the major themes that's going through this epistle is being faithful to God, being faithful to his word, and also um, adhering to the tools, to um, the remedy that God has given us. Um, we, we cannot create our own remedy and think that we're going to be successfully faithful, um, you know, as a Christian. If we're going to be successful, we're going to have to do things the way that God has orchestrated them, the way that God has set them up. If we want the end results, we got to, um, you know, follow <coughs> the way that God has put things in place. Mm -hmm. But in verse number 19, he says, holding faith. If someone got a different version, I read from the King James Version, but I want to hear that in a different translation as well. Verse number 19 and verse number 20, if you, will, <coughs> if you got a different version. Having faith and a good conscience which some have rejected concerning the faith, <clears throat> concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck, of whom are Hemonias and Alexander, whom I deliver to Satan, that they may learn not to be a blaspheme. All right, all right. So, as we begin at <laughs> verse number one, we see Paul, he starts off by stating his credentials. He started off by st stating his credentials. In verse number one of this chapter, he said, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God. I'm not just an apostle by willy-nilly. It's by the commandment of God that God selected me. Mm -hmm. um, he said, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, 
mine own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And that's, that's as far as we uh, got in our reading. But we, we stated some things and we looked at several passages so we can see the context of what Paul is saying here. Uh, we understand that he begat Timothy uh, through the teaching of the gospel. We found biblical reference for that in Acts the 14th chapter during the first missionary journey. Uh, remember I told y'all to know Lystra and Derby. Mm -hmm. Lystra and Derby. Uh, during the first missionary journey, that's where Paul and um, others who were teaching, they went through that area. And as a result, on the second missionary journey, we find in chapter number 16 of the book of Acts, we find that Timothy is now a Christian. Um, he's a Christian. He's faithful. Uh, Paul recognized that. And as a result, he wanted Timothy to be a part of of the ministry, a part of his ministry particularly, and as a result, Timothy were, was able to um, accompany him on missionary journeys, but also Paul, as he continued to groom Timothy, continued to instruct Timothy, he was able to release him to certain assignments mm -hmm. with the same authority, um, and we found on, you know, by looking at several passages, Timothy was sent to what some of the cities that he was sent to if you if you remember quickly uh, some of the Actually, some of the places Macedonia, Macedonia Ephesus, Ephesus um, any other city they stand out for you all that Timothy was sent to Philippi y'all remember Philippi um, uh, and also I believe that Timothy was in Corinth with, with Paul as well. So you don't have to look at it. That was just one as we fly over. But um, why is sound doctrine important? Well, let me, let me start off by saying this, and you probably get the answer in this. But I want you to get, you know, because we hear this word sound doctrine, sound, sound. I, I want to define the word sound. When we just look at, and this is not a Greek dictionary or a Hebrew dictionary, this is just um, the, well, let me see, which dictionary is this? This is the American Heritage Dictionary. But the word sound, it can be defined as, and this is the second meaning, it, it can be defined as free from injury, damage, defect, disease in good condition, healthy, robust, a sound heart, a sound mind, financially strong, secure, reliable, a sound business, sound investments, competent, sensible, valid, sound judgment, having no defect as to truth, justice, wisdom, or reason, sound advice of substantial or enduring character, sound moral values, following in a systematic pattern without any apparent defect in logic, sound reasoning, uninterrupted and un, untroubled, deep, sound sleep, <laughs> vigorous, thorough, or severe, a sound thrash free from moral defect and weakness, upright, honest and good and honorable, loyal, having no legal defect, a sound title to property, theologically correct or orthodox as doctrine or a theologian. Um, so I, I, I want to read that because oftentimes we can understand soundness when it comes to other areas of our life. Uh, how many of y'all like to be financially sound? Mm -hmm. That just means to be healthy financially. As as one of the um, one of the one of the um, definitions, a sound business. 
you, you like to be a part of a sound company mm -hmm. that's doing well, that's thriving, that's healthy, uh, uh, a sound marriage, healthy marriage, sound children, sound reasoning. Mm -hmm. So as we continue to talk about sound doctrine, Paul is instructing us as well as Timothy to teach things that's healthy, that's consistent with God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, when we start putting our sayings and our philosophies and our reasoning in it, that's when it becomes unhealthy because we contaminate that which is healthy. Yeah. If God needed our help, he wouldn't have had to do what he, he did. Amen. If we could save ourselves and we were wise enough to come up with a solution within ourselves, he wouldn't have never had to down the cross. He wouldn't have never had to give us the word if we were able to do it within ourselves. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, and as we read verse number 19 and 20, it was men within the church, within the ranks. They were teaching things that was not consistent with sound doctrine, with sound teaching. And, and do y'all not know, do you not know? That we can rationalize and we can justify things that's not un that's something that that's not sound, mm -hmm. that's unsound. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can come up with and we see it in the religious world every day. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I try not to talk about people. I try not to you know talk about TV evangelists and everything. But I, I some of y'all may have heard about this preacher down in Texas. He already got three jets. Mm -hmm. And he told his congregation, God told him <laughs> that um, he needed a fourth jet that cost $64 million, right? He got three of them already, right? 64 or 54. Um, Who do you want uh, the airport? <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, when you hear things like that, even though we know that, you know, it's, it's, it's something to that, um, it's a reflection on the religious world as a whole mm. because, you know, they, some people who don't go to church and feel justified for not going to church, they look at us all together. They, they don't see Church mm. of Christ. They just see Christodom. They see mm. those who go to church, believe God. See, this is what they teach, and this is why I don't go to church, you know, and so on and so forth. So they feel justified. But, but my point was people can come up with all type of reasons and teachings and feel justified in doing it because sometimes people adopt worldly philosophies. The means justify the end, mm -hmm. right? It don't matter what's going on because my intentions at the end of the day, I want to spread the good news. I want to be on TV and um, I want to, I'm going to buy Bibles. I'm going to send Bibles across seas. So, you know, it don't matter Mm. how I achieve that I see. because you know it just don't matter and, and men begin to teach things because you'll begin to feel justified mm -hmm. I'm doing it for a good reason mm -hmm. yeah. I'm doing it for a good cause but that still allows unsound and unbiblical teachings to creep in mm -hmm. and, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in our text mm -hmm. um, any comments any questions before we get into the rest of the verses. All right, all right. So, he says in verse number four, matter of fact, can I get someone to read verse number four through verse number 11? Verse number four through verse number 11. Nor give heed to fables and endless geology. Genealogies. <laughs> yeah, which cause dispute rather than godly affection. Which is in which is in the faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk, mm -hmm. desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, 
for murderers of fathers and murderers of mother, for manslayers, for fornication, for sodominates, for kidnappings, kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there may be other things which is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the, gen the glorious gospel of the, of the blessed God, which has committed to my trust. Amen. Amen. So, he, in verse number 11, he ends this um, length of passage, if you will, by saying, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. I got to go back up into verse number 10. Mm -hmm. um, he says, um, and if there be any other thing that is contrary mm -hmm. to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel mm -hmm. of the blessed God, God, which was committed to my trust. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things or one of the areas of concern when he was talking about sound doctrine, he had some that was trying to mix the law with mm -hmm. the gospel. Right. Um, and, and we understand that the law, the law, um, as we study the Ten Commandments, <coughs> as we study um, the sands, the Mosaic law, and um, everything that was at play prior to <coughs> Jesus fulfilling the law. One passage says that the law was given to expose our unrighteousness. It was to show us that we wasn't right. Mm -hmm. It was to show us that we needed God, we needed a savior. You know, we, we we're given these commandments to just show us that, you know, we needed a savior because we fell short of the commandments. One passage says where there is no law, there is no transgression. So God gave us and showed us, okay, these are all the areas that you fall short of as a result of your depravity, as a result of your not being holy, uh, 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 as a result of your defilement, these are the areas that you fall short of. Now, the law is to expose, and maybe maybe uh, we'll get it this way. Uh, we'll get it this way. You know, just like when you go to a doctor, right, and you have to get in, um, I think it's the key, what is it, the uh, MRI machine and What's that other machine? EKG. EKG. Oh, okay. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> but oftentimes, a lot of those instruments that they use are to come up with a prognosis, to come up with a diagnosis, to find out, you know, what you are dealing with, mm -hmm. what what is causing this to take place in your body, right? But those machines are not designed to remedy. It's not designed to correct mm -hmm. what is taking place mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of how we can look at the law. The law was given to expose mm -hmm. this is where you guys at, right? Mm -hmm. This is where humanity at as a result of the fall. We are the pride. We are in need of a savior. Mm -hmm. But Christ is the solution. Yes, mm -hmm. Amen. He's the remedy. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so you, you, you know, what was taking place in the church, and it's, it takes place today, when we begin to elevate, because if, if we study Hebrews, and one day we're going we gonna to get there, but if we study Hebrews, God plainly says it. Mm -hmm. Moses was a great man, mm -hmm. but Christ, yes. he's over Moses and over all mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. He continues to say the Sabbath was great, but Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath, Amen. right? Amen. If we study Hebrews, we'll find out that God, he continues to show. Matter of fact, remember when Jesus was baptized. This is my only begotten son. Hear ye him, mm -hmm. right? 
Hebrews, the first chapter, uh, in sundry times, in diverse times, God spoke by the prophets. But in these last days, he speaks to us through his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. So it's nothing wrong with the law, but when you put it on the level of Christ, it can remedy what Christ remedies for us. We know by the shedding of blood, there, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, right? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. But here's the thing. In order for sins to be eradicated, it still has to be a type of blood. It can't just be no any blood. I can shed my blood, but ain't nobody going to be <laughs> saved from my blood because my blood is contaminated, right? Yeah. Amen. But Jesus' blood, Jesus' yeah. blood, oh. it took Jesus sacrificing his blood. By his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of God's people was laid up on him. Yeah. So he's the remedy. And, and that's what he's getting at in this text. Um, he says, now... People are teaching things unsound, untrue. And then he bring up, let me just go back real quick, because he bring up things that are pertained in the law. He talks about, I'm starting at verse number seven. He says, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor wherefore they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. You cannot attain righteousness through the law. Uh, not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. It just exposed that you are disobedient and you are lawless. Mm -hmm. Where there is no law, there's no transgression. Mm -hmm. but, but when we are uh, uh, put against the law, then we see how short we come up when it comes to God's standards. Mm -hmm. But he says, he says... But for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stillers, for liars and for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now he shared some things um, where we were in violation if you fall in that category of a number of things when it came to the law. Number one, if you look at the Ten Commandments, and you don't have to turn over there, but we know the number number five commandment is honor thy father and thy mother. And, and, this, and in this list he says murderer of fathers and mothers. We know um, in the Ten Commandments, number six is thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. He says that murderers of fathers and mothers, manslayers. Mm -hmm. We know from the Ten Commandments, number seven is thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. He says whoremongers, mm -hmm. fornicators, them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, mm -hmm. homosexuals, if you will. Um, and then verse number me um, number nine, the, the ninth commandment, well, number eight is thou shalt not steal. He says man stealers, mm -hmm. kidnappers. And number nine, he says thou shalt not bear false witness. And in this list, he lists, um, he lists liars, perjured persons, um, and, and, and those who do such like. That's the way that he ended. Now, I'm, quickly, I want to go over to Philippians, Philippians, the third chapter, because I, I want to make sure we understand the contrast between the gospel and the law. Both are from God. But keep in mind what Paul said in First Timothy one. He said, if it's used lawfully. Remember Jesus even said, Jesus said in Matthew the fifth chapter, he said, I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it. He said, I came to fulfill it. Uh, you know, it, it has its place. Mm -hmm. But I came to fulfill it. But look what the Bible says in Philippians the third chapter. And I was going to read it all, but I won't read it all just for time's sake. Let's start at verse number six of Philippians the third chapter. 
He says, concern is zeal, and this is Paul giving his credentials as, you know, a Judaizer. And verse number six, he says, concern is zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubt, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Now, listen what he says. He says, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. Y'all heard that? Uh, uh, you know, I could come up with some stuff when it comes just to the law. I know I'm unright. I want to pause there for a minute because I want us to see this. I want us to see this. Remember, I said the EKJ um, machine and the MRI is just to expose the sin. Mm -hmm. But once we know, once we come to the mindset, once we accept it, okay, I, 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 I got the diagnosis, I got the prognosis. Now I can say I'm getting up out of this hospital. I know what I'm going to do. I'm about to drink bacon soda every day. I, I could come up with my own remedy. You hear this? I want y'all to hear this. I could come up with my own remedy. I, I'm going to um, eat grass. I'm going to lay out in the sun. I'm going to stay in the ocean. And, and I'm just saying, some people, they come up with their own, and some of it works, some of it don't. But, but the point to be made is, once we find out that we are sick <clears throat> with sin, he said that it's easy for us to come up with our own righteousness, our own remedy, if you will. Mm -hmm. But he's going to show us how we are to deal with our sin situation. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 9, he says, And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want righteousness, because we're talking about sin, we talk, we use a sin, and we comparing sin to sickness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then we're comparing righteousness to the remedy. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, if we know that we have sin, we know we have sickness, he's saying that we cannot deal with our sickness with our own means, with our own remedies, if we're going to correct our sickness, if we're going to con uh, correct our sin, Christ has to be the solution. He has to be the remedy. Because if we, if, if we don't, all we're going to do is end up being more unhealthy and pretty much, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I come up with a remedy, and now we're, we're talking back to teaching. I want to go back to teaching. I want, I want us to focus on teaching. If I come up with a philosophy, if I come up with my own teaching, with the same authority that I come up with my own teaching, my own remedy, you can come up with your own teaching and your own remedy. Amen. Now, if all of us do that, and then Christ is telling us to be one and be on one accord. <laughs> all of us got different teachings, all philosophies, all different remedies. Mm -hmm. How are we going to be one? Mercy. <laughs> but the way that we can be one, because there really is only one solution, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. He didn't ask for us to come up with our own remedy or our own solution. He already gave us the solution, which is Christ Jesus. But what's imperative and what's incumbent on a Christian is that we embrace the remedy. Y'all remember I alluded to it. We didn't study it, but I alluded to it last Sunday. And uh, 2 Kings, the fifth chapter, there was one by the name of Naaman who was sick of leprosy. And um, Elijah told him to go dip in the Jordan or, or rather the Damascus River. And Naaman said, nah, why I got to do that? Seven times, why? Ain't there some other rivers around here for me to, you know, much cleaner? Elijah then changed it. He said, now, if you want to be whole, that's what you got to go do. And he went and dipped seven times, and lo and behold, his leprosy 
was cleansed. But if Naaman came up, he said, no, I ain't doing what Elijah said, though. I'm going to come up with something else. I know Elijah said it, but no, we ain't doing that. And instead of being baptized, you can be sprinkled. Amen. 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 Uh -uh. I ain't doing baptism. Instead of that, you can be sprinkled. I just come and I'm going to lay my hands on you, fall out, and I'm going to put a sheet over you. You say it. You know, but people teach this and people believe it. You know, um, and, and, and it's the same concept because Jesus has already gave us a set of commandments to follow. But when we disregard them and we begin to embrace our own thinking, Paul said pretty much we have our righteousness, but it comes out of the law. That has exposed our sickness, if you will. Let's go back over to uh, 1 Timothy. Any questions, any comments as we go back over to um, the book of <clears throat> Timothy? <clears throat> so he gave this list about all these things that we deal with. <laughs> Whoremongering. Man still liars. Mm -hmm. Perjurers. Mm -hmm. He said all these things are contrary to healthy doctrine, healthy teachings, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes into verse number 12. He says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, mm -hmm. who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer mm -hmm. and a persecutor mercy. and injurious, but I attained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Mm -hmm. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners in whom I am chief. Wow. Howbeit for this cause I attain mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And I want to read, I'm going to read verse number 18. I would, could, I would stop there, but I just want to read verse number 18 because we haven't read it. But he says, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Now, once again, he says, he, he ends it. In verse number 16, after giving the list of all our violations, after all the exposure, what the law would expose when it comes to humanity, he ends it by giving his personal testimony. Mm -hmm. I thought I could do it by the law, but I was a blasphemer, persecutor, yeah. persecuted the church, mm -hmm. injurious. We know in Acts the 8th chapter, he was there at the death of the servant Stephen. Matter of fact, he holds the coats of the ones who <laughs> stoned him to death. He says, I did it ignorantly. God was merciful to me. He, he was merciful to me. But I was in violation. Mm -hmm. Remember I, earlier in the lesson I said that we can rationalize some things religiously? Mm -hmm. You know, when he was doing it, he thought he was doing God's work. Yeah. These Christians opposing Judaism, these Christians... Uh, these people that's talking about they are Jesus followers and they are Christians, he, he thought he was doing God a favor. Mm. Thinking of the law. Mm. Trying to keep the law. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. We got to be careful. We got to be careful when we start making rules and we start looking at everybody else. We start thinking about all the violations everybody else is making. <laughs> See, when you start <laughs> specializing in everybody else's violations, if you're not careful, you will end up being in violation. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
Because, yes, <laughs> because, okay, I, 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 we, 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 we'll come back to that. But he starts, he starts by saying in verse number 17 and 18, no, verse number 16 and 17, he says, I'll be it for the cause I obtain mercy that in me, first Christ Jesus, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Then verse number 17, he says, now unto the king, now Jesus, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. When he was reminiscing about how off he was, <laughs> how much in violation he was, and yet God kept him, mm -hmm. yet God allowed his mercy and grace to be on his life, even though he was in violation, kicking and persecuting God's people and God's body. He says, the only wise God, <laughs> to him, the king, eternal, immortal, and invisible, honor and glory for him forever and ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> because our only remedy is Christ Jesus. And, and once Christ encounter, once Christ comes into our life, we have to be grateful because we were unsaved until Christ saved us. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. See, if we die without Christ, we were on our way to a devil's hell. Mm -hmm. and, and when we look back, as Paul looked back over his life, mm -hmm. even though what I, I had a clear conscience, I thought I was doing right. I thought I was okay. But yet and still I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, I was a good man. I provided for my family. Mm -hmm. I was a good woman. I took care of my kids. I, I just wanted to live. I wanted to make an honest living. And then when God revealed that that's not enough, you still fell short of my glory. Mm -hmm. You need Christ Jesus to make up the other end. When we look back now that Christ is in our life, as he was talking to the Ephesian church, that how rich we are, that uh, through Christ we, we can uh, um, receive blessings. I'm in Ephesians 3.20. Um, exceedingly, mm -hmm. abundantly. What, can somebody help me with that verse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's through Christ Jesus that we receive that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We receive that through Christ Jesus and, and him only. So I just want to share that. Any comments, any questions? We got a few minutes. We got a few minutes. Uh, keep in mind as we get ready to conclude. Well, I'm going to read it again. We're going to read it again. Go ahead, uh, Sister I wanna, Anderson. I, I, I want to read my version of um, New International Version, which, uh, which uh, Reverse. 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 Trustworthy saying that deserve full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, mm -hmm. so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display His ultimate patience as an example for those who would believe on Him and mm -hmm. receive eternal life. Amen. 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 Now. Since you went back there and that brought up something, that brought that, that stirred up something when you read it that I, I don't know if I was founded on. But I want y'all to see this. See, the law was to expose how bad we were. Mm -hmm. But now, if we don't accept the prognosis, mm -hmm. if we don't accept the diagnosis, we can leave out of church and think we okay without Christ. <laughs> right? But Paul, he, he said, now, on just a simple level, I was good. But you hear how he summed up himself. He said, I was the worst of all sinners. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, think about the people who didn't do what Paul did. Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't persecute no church. I, wasn't, I didn't conspire to kill Stephen. I, I'm, I'm just, I keep the Sabbath. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a good 
Judaizer. I'm all right. But Paul was saying, Paul was saying, I'm the chief of all sinners. And we know that Paul has some rank. Mm -hmm. He was born of the right tribe. Mm -hmm. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. We know that was an elite group of his day. But yet it's still, he summarized himself as the chief of sinners. Mm -hmm. But now he thanked God because now he received and accepted the remedy, which is Christ Jesus. Now, I, I can't end without this because we're talking about sound doctrine. With the last three minutes I have, I want to, once again, read verse number 19 with me again. Verse number 19 and 20. He says, holding faith in a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to I wanna keep that in mind as we go over to Titus, the book of Titus. And let's go over to chapter number three, if you would, because I want us to understand another reason for this letter. We understand that it was some unsound teaching going on. We know that Christ is the truth. But also, I want us to see the, I, I, and this is going to take, we, we're going to have to develop this over the time that we study these books because, you know, um, I, I mentioned, I said, you know, if we're not careful, if we specialize in pointing out other people's violations, mm -hmm. We can become a violation ourselves. I did say that, right? But I want us to recognize that this is going to be over the discourse of this study. There is a part that we play as children of God, mm -hmm. as brothers and sisters in Christ, as preachers, as elders, as deacons, as teachers, as Interaction with each other. It's a part that we play as well. Amen. It's not all God. It's a part we play as well. Matter of fact, and I'm, we didn't get a chance to get over there, but y'all familiar with Matthew, the 18th chapter of the Bible, talks about if you have an ought with your brother, go to him. Yeah. If he would not receive you, you take somebody else. If he don't receive the two of you, you, you bring it before the church. So there is an element that we play when it comes to things that's not healthy, things that's unsound. There's a part that we play as well. I, I don't want us to overlook that. I don't want us to overlook that. But the, the emphasis that I was placing is specializing. Because <laughs> all of us can be like Eli. Y'all remember over in 1 Samuel when Hannah was praying? And Eli, he said, you drunk. She said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman of sorrow. She was praying inwardly. But his, his, um, his, um, oh, the word I'm looking for. Perspective. His perspective or his estimation of what was taking place was that she was drunk. But he was wrong. She was not drunk. Mm -hmm. Right? So some things, as we talk about it, it's going to be a part that God play, but it's going to be some stuff that's just right out that we got to deal with. Mm -hmm. We know what it is. We can't keep overlooking it. We can't keep turning the blind eye. It's some stuff we got to deal with and we got to address. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, real quick, um, Titus chapter number three, real quick, verse number one. He says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers and obey magistrates to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers and lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he showed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should, uh, sh should be made 
heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Verse number eight. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second at, at, admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinners, being condemned of himself. All right. Now, we, it's, it's another part that I want to look at, but I want us to see that he gave instructions to the church that when you know someone is just set on being out of rank, being rebellious, trying to spread things that's not wholesome, that's not consistent with the word of God, the Bible says we do have an obligation to address those folks. Amen. We seen it in verse number 19 and verse number 20. He pointed out, he gave names as well. And I think that's good for us too. That'll send us a whole nother, uh, a whole nother class because sometimes we like to talk about people and we don't, you know, uh, they said, no, nah, it needs to be specific sometime about who you talking about. We can't just be, they say and she say, no, we need to deal with some stuff and, and some of that come with love. See, it, when, when you're dealing with chastisement, when you're dealing with correction, there has to be love involved. Amen. Amen. That's right. Correction without and chastisement without love mm -hmm. is not going to carry out what God is telling us to carry out. Jesus said it this way in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, whom God loved, he chastises. Love and chastisement go together, right? But you can't be chastising folks. And trying to correct folks, and that love is not there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And, and you know, uh, we gotta close. <laughs> we gotta close because we over time. Uh, you want to say something, Sister so, 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 I just wanted to add to what you say, and the chastisement has to be directed to whom, and personalized to, whether it's me or Richard or you. It has to be pointed out that I am the one that's in fault here. This is why I am being chastised, and it's not like the whole group or the whole church. All right, all right, all so it right. It has to be personalized. Amen, amen. So we'll pick up um, where we left off at, and it was a whole bunch more we wanted to share, but we just couldn't. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you.